Hey there, my friend. This is Dr. Anthony Balduzzi from the Fit Father Project and the Fit Mother Project. Welcome to today's video where we're gonna be kicking off a video series talking about the most important hormones for weight loss and muscle building. And this is a really important series because we focus a lot on the, all of our videos on talking about the habits, right? The things you can do with your nutrition and your exercise and the good behaviors. Well, behind the habits, there's a lot of biochemistry and physiology that's happening. And these habits are manipulating your hormones. In today's video, what we wanna do is break down the first hormone in the series, and that is cortisol, which is one of the most misunderstood hormones as it relates to your goals of, of building muscle, losing fat, and living a long and healthy life. Many people have been told that cortisol is this stress hormone and that it's bad for you and you don't want cortisol. Well, there's a sliver of truth to that, but cortisol is actually massively beneficial as well. And in this video, what I wanna do is just simplify the science and leave you in the next few minutes with a great understanding of what cortisol is, how it changes throughout the day, and some simple things you can do to have cortisol work for you so you have more energy and a greater vitality and you're not stressed out all the time. I know you're gonna find this video very valuable. Take some notes and let's dive on in. All right, so let's kick off this video today talking about cortisol, what it is, what it does in the body, and why this should matter to you. So cortisol is our body's main stress and activation hormone. It is produced when we're either under physical stress through exercise or working out, or even mental or psychological stress. Whenever our body basically senses that we're stressed, and this could be from work and life, the brain communicates to these two little glands that sit on top of your kidneys called your adrenal glands, and the adrenal glands produce cortisol. And what cortisol's role is, is effectively to activate the body to deal with acute stress. So what it does is it actually raises blood sugars. It actually breaks down some of this stored blood sugar in our muscles, the glycogen, and in our liver, and liberates that to get it into circulation because the body's ready to do stuff. So we have elevated sugar. While the elevated sugar, it actually breaks down some fats as well. So this is something not many people know because people often believe that cortisol leads to weight gain, and it does, and I'll get to that in just a little bit um, when it's chronically elevated, but in the short term, cortisol actually breaks down fat. It increases fat burning because the goal of the body when it's stressed is to get energy into circulation in the form of carbohydrate and glucose, as well as free fatty acids. Cortisol is also very anti-inflammatory. It actually squashes inflammation, which means it actually lowers your immune system. And that kind of makes sense because when we're in an acutely stressed state, we're looking at dealing with an immediate stressor, the body doesn't need to worry about long-term immune system protection. It needs to worry about short-term immediate demands. And the immune system is energetically taxing. So what cortisol does, it suppresses that immune system. But alongside this activation comes energy. And it's not surprising that when we look at our circadian rhythm, which is basically the rhythms that our body goes through throughout this 24-hour cycle, Cycle, cortisol rises in the morning. It's one of the things that actually gets us out of bed and gets us energized. Cortisol levels are at their peak in the morning times. The levels of cortisol from 6 to 8 a.m. are roughly 10 to 20 micrograms uh, per deciliter of blood. And later on in the evening, it might go down to three or so. So an ideal normal cortisol pattern is it rises in the morning, gives us some energy, and then lowers at night. And when cortisol is lowering at night, our melatonin levels are hopefully rising, which is gonna help prepare us for sleep. So cortisol, I want you to start thinking of it as this activation hormone. Our bodies do it naturally. We need this floating around. The problem comes when we have chronically elevated cortisol. The body wants cortisol to rise acutely and then to fall back down and to go through this nice gentle rhythm. But in modern life, we have so many stressors and primarily psychological stressors through the demands of our life, our work, and our families that lead to this constant production of cortisol. So what happens when cortisol is constantly elevated and we're in a stressed state? Well, this is where we can have some impacts on weight gain and actual muscle breakdown. So one of cortisol's jobs, like I said, is to mobilize energy and get us ready to be activated. And one of the unique things it does is it actually takes fatty acids, these little fatty acids that are stored in our fat cells, and it can move those to the abdominal cavity. It can actually move those fats to the abdominal cavity so they're, they're closer in this local area for lots of use by these metabolically active organs. And it turns out that the dangerous kind of fat that we don't want is called visceral fat. That's the deep fat, not just the fat we can pinch, but the fat that actually lines our organs in our inner abdominal cavity. That deep visceral fat expresses cortisol receptors four times more than normal fat. So cortisol, when it's raised constantly, is kind of shuttling some of this fat into this deep abdominal layer. And then that kind of fat is actually inflammatory. So over over time, when you have too much visceral abdominal fat, it can actually increase inflammation around your key organs, which is absolutely what you do not want. So the first key point here is cortisol is good short term. It's bad if it gets chronically elevated because it does actually increase this visceral fat deposition and the body is actually, it's kind of like a protective mechanism. When it's constantly stressed, it's going to really try to get the nutrients deep into this area. It just happens to be bad for our health overall. 
Another way that cortisol actually can affect your weight gain is that elevated cortisol levels actually increases some of your hunger hormones in your brain, like ghrelin and neuropeptide Y. So this is really interesting and kind of like the indirect way that chronically elevated cortisol can lead to weight gain is that it makes you hungry all the time. Because again, when your body's in a stress state, it's trying to get energy to deal with the acute stress. And one of the ways that cortisol helps do this is increases your appetite and particularly for foods that are very high yield in energy, salty, sugary foods, fatty foods. Your body wants these nutrients to deal with the stress and cortisol influences the brain directly in that account. So in addition to having some of the storage of the different kinds of fats that are moved into that visceral fat, having increased appetite from chronically elevated cortisol can mean that you're eating more calories and then putting on more weight. So it can become a little bit of a vicious cycle over time. And another thing worth noting is as you go further in your diet and you're losing more weight and you've been in a calorie deficit for a long period of time, cortisol levels can start to creep up. And when that's happening, right, it's gonna be, you're gonna be hungrier on your diet. And this often happens when people lose weight for a long time, the hunger level starts to creep up. Uh, cortisol is influencing a part of that. And also if you're not strength training, you're not doing enough to really have enough protein and stuff to really protect your muscles, you could be losing some muscle mass in the process. And when you're losing muscle mass on a diet, your metabolic rate slows down. So over the long haul, when cortisol is constantly elevated or you're not doing some of these things we're talking about in this video to buffer it, it can be problematic on the weight gain front. And now this is another thing I think is very important to understand about cortisol. Cortisol is on a seesaw relationship with the hormone insulin which we're gonna do a whole video on insulin very soon because it's another key, one of these health and metabolic hormones. When insulin levels raise, meaning we've eaten some carbohydrate or some protein containing foods and insulin raises, it actually lowers cortisol. Because remember, cortisol is the breakdown uh, type of hormone that's activating energy. Insulin gets rised when we feel like we're eating nutrients and the body senses nutrients are coming in, so it goes into storage mode. Cortisol is catabolic, it breaks things down. Insulin is anabolic and it builds things up. So this is important to know. Maybe after you've exercised or if you're in a stressful period of time, there can be some benefits to having insulin rise, particularly post-workout, and get some carbohydrate-containing foods, because that insulin spike is actually going to help protect your muscles, reduce the cortisol from an exercise session, and just generally help lower cortisol levels. So practically speaking, what do you do? Well, if you feel like you have a problem with your cortisol, and I think you can be as evidenced by you feel like you're always constantly wired, or you feel like you're constantly crashed, you can actually go to your doctor and you can get cortisol tests to see where your cortisol levels are at. And they can test your cortisol level via your blood at a couple times during the day. They can test it in the morning to see where are you at. Is cortisol adequate in the morning? Do you have enough levels? And you can also test it later at night to see is cortisol raised way too much at night when it should be lowered. And you need to get these snapshots because like any circadian hormone, it's not like cortisol is at one constant level. It's rising up and rising down. So how do you actually help fix cortisol? Well, I think one of the best things you can do to help establish a healthy circadian rhythm and have good cortisol is to actually retrain your circadian rhythm to be aligned with the natural light cycles of the environment. This is some fascinating research. And I absolutely love it because it kind of fits into my meta and I guess spiritual perspectives on this stuff is that we're meant to get outside and get some light on our skin and light in our eyes. Vitamin D and cortisol are very related. And when we get the natural sun exposure, if we're able to, it actually helps kick up that vitamin D production, which is protective in a stressed state. We want good vitamin D levels, but the light actually hits our eyes as well and smooths out that normal cortisol rhythm in the morning. So cortisol naturally rises and it turns out when we get sunshine in our eyes, it helps smooth that out and balance that. And then late at night, if we're, if we're being cognizant about not being around screens and phones, particularly uh, during the time right when you're about to go to bed, that can actually make sure that cortisol is not jacked up later at night. So this is a really important consideration. Anytime you wanna work on cortisol, you need to work on your circadian rhythm. And that means getting natural light in the morning, cutting down on artificial light later in the day. Now, there are a couple different supplements as well that I think are really relevant if you feel like your body's in a stressed state and you wanna help uh, manage cortisol better. One is a supplement called L-theanine. It is a particular amino acid that's found in green tea, and it's really unique because it actually decreases cortisol levels in the brain and gives you this feeling of being more relaxed because cortisol is working all over the place. And if you're someone who feels like you need to have regular coffee or stimulants to get you going, uh, green tea and L-theanine is a really good option because it gives you this energy boost, um, but it actually doesn't have this like huge spiking effect on your stress hormones. So that is something to consider. And some people find for helping them sleep better, taking some melatonin with around 200 milligrams of this L-theanine sometime in the evening can be a very relaxing habit. I do not recommend you drink green tea later in the day due to the caffeine content, but in the morning, it could be a really good thing because you get a of some of this caffeine with the L-theanine, that's something to consider. 
I also think it's super important to make sure that your magnesium levels are in check because our bodies actually produce a, a molecule called cortisone, which you've probably seen in a tube. Anytime you've seen any of these like anti-itch creams from a bug bite, they often have cortisone in them. It's a topical form. Well, cortisone gets converted to cortisol, which is the active stress hormone molecule that we're talking about has all these effects, and magnesium is involved in this conversion. Magnesium helps it convert to active cortisol and actually helps it convert back to the less active form cortisone. So you need adequate magnesium levels, and it's just a fact of modern living that most of us are not getting enough magnesium. Our soils are depleted, which means there's not as much magnesium in the foods that we're eating, and stress burns through magnesium as well because of these metabolic pathways that are needed and using magnesium constantly. So if you're someone who feels like this dimension of your life, the stress dimension is very high, I recommend you supplement magnesium. At the very least, eat magnesium-containing foods. Here's a little trick. Inside our Fit Father and Fit Mother programs, we often include some cacao powder, some organic cacao powder in these morning shakes that we recommend because cacao is one of the most powerful foods that's super rich in magnesium, and it also has a feel-good chemical called theobromine that gives you a little boost in the morning. So if you're one of our Fit Father or Fit Mother members inside of our programs, then you've been actually getting a good source of magnesium automatically in the program. But there's just so many good fruits, fruits and vegetables that you see here on this uh, video that are really good, rich sources of magnesium. You can include those in your diet it's gonna help you keep a more balanced circadian rhythm and cortisol levels. And there are a couple other supplements that can be used um, to really target cortisol levels, but I would recommend at that point that you're working with um, a physician, a health coach, someone in your local area who does some blood testing before you start working with some of these other compounds like phosphatidylserine, like rhodiola, um, maca can have some effects on cortisol. There are some other things, but it's a good idea if you're really gonna get targeted into it, assess cortisol that you get a blood test and you check in. What is your rhythm of cortisol? So the take home messages from here is that cortisol is something that our bodies absolutely need. It actually helps break down fats. It actually helps break down carbohydrates and gives us energy. Cortisol will naturally rise every day for the rest of your life in the morning and exercise and other stressors are really what uh, raises cortisol. And that's okay in the short term. We just don't want chronically elevated cortisol because it breaks down muscle tissue, it breaks down bone, uh, and it can lead to that visceral fat accumulation. And this means we need to manage our stress. It's probably one of the most important things when it comes down to our health, because remember, this cortisol is being released because of a mental perception of what's happening in our lives. We could be in the exact same situation, but perceive it differently as not a threat or as something that just is, and we kind of come into this acceptance and lowering our stress levels through like effectively psychology and, and just awareness. That's gonna have a huge impact on our physiology. The people who live the longest and who have the longest healthy lives are not in a stressed state. We wanna be stressed when we have acute situations, we wanna be relaxed the rest of the time. And this means that cortisol could be one of your best friends. It could be this energizing boost every day, and then you can relax into the rest of the day and ride this beautiful rhythm. You want cortisol to work for you in a healthy, balanced way, and this comes down to your circadian rhythm, this comes down to things like magnesium, this comes down to optimizing your sleep, and optimizing your mindset and your thinking. If stress is an area that you need to improve, work on that. Anytime we're looking at improving our health, we can work on the highest order things. Stress being a very high order thing, it causes this whole downstream cascade. You can work on improving your stress, stress through prayer, meditation, walking outside, learning to breathe through your nose. All these things will have such a tremendous impact on your physiology, which will help your ability to lose weight and build muscle in the long run. I hope you found this valuable. This was a good primer into getting into cortisol. I want you to stay tuned for the next video. We're gonna be talking about insulin, which I think is even more interesting and obviously has this relationship seesaw with cortisol. We're gonna talk about insulin, this hormone that is talked about so much because it has big effects on both muscle building and fat accumulation. We're gonna show you how we believe you can modulate insulin in a very simple, sustainable, and balanced way for great health that's coming up in this series. If you enjoyed this stuff and you actually just want some simple free meal plans and free workouts to help you get the best results, there's gonna be links below in the description. I'll tell you about those as well at the end of this video. Overall, I'm super happy you're here. I hope you learned something valuable today. Stay tuned for part two in the series where we talk about insulin. I hope you have a beautiful day and I'll talk to you really soon. Hey there, it's Dr. A. Thanks so much for checking out today's video. I hope you found it valuable. Here at the Fit Mother Project, my team and I are on a mission to help busy moms, particularly ladies in their 40s, 50s, and 60s, lose weight, tone up, build muscle, and get healthy for themselves and their families. So I'm super grateful you're here. I wanna invite you to subscribe to our Fit Mother Project YouTube channel. You'll get instant access to the hundreds of different videos we have on nutrition, exercise, mindset, supplementation, all the important stuff you wanna know about. Also, if you scroll below in the description of any of our videos, you can click some links and get our free meal plan and free workout that we designed for fit moms. We'll send it straight to your email. And we'll show you some of our simple strategies and workouts to help you lose weight, boost your metabolism, and just look and feel younger. 
And of course, you could also visit us at fitmotherproject.com where you can get in contact with me and my team. Tell us about what's going on with you and your health. We're really happy to help you. Thanks for being here, my friend. Subscribe. I'll see you around the channel and I'll talk to you very soon.